wanted to get everything fixed right. <clears throat> but we're going to be talking on the on the We're going to be talking on the seven seals if I can get everything right. Anyways, I thought I had everything perfect. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> We're going to be talking about the seven seals of, of Revelations. And... They're pretty interesting. I found something that I kind of liked. I don't know. I I've always kind of uh, I've always kind of liked the thought that this person's laying out because if you look in the in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the twenty fourth chapter is the Olivet Discourse that Jesus laid out uh, when his disciples come to him asking him different questions. And the first three verses says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not the, all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here on one stone upon another that, that shall not be thrown down. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of, and of the end of the world? Okay? Now Jesus is going to lay out a, 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 a prophecy. I don't want to say a prediction at all, because I don't believe in. I don't Jesus. I don't believe. I've heard him say that Jesus makes predict, predictions, but but I, I don't know. I don't I don't like to call them predictions. I like to say Jesus said that this was going to happen. And it always happens just the way that he said it would happen. So if you want to call that a prediction, I guess that's fine. But I don't think I want to. But anyways, the disciples, Jesus told them, well, you know, you can find this in uh, Mark, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, I believe. And also in Luke's Gospel, I think it's, I think it's, uh, chapter 21 or in that area but I'm pretty sure it's 21 and and they lay it out a little bit different each one of the authors does but you have to remember that that this book right here the one you ought to get open and watch and follow along uh, when you get up in the morning because it's almost uh, I don't know what time it is right now it's well it ain't whole late but it's nine o'clock in the evening so Anyways, Jesus is saying some things, and beginning at the fourth verse, he told them that the temple would... See, when they left that temple, oh, they was just awed. They said, look at here, Lord, look at this wonderful building. Look how pretty and nice. Jesus said, it's going to be torn down. There won't be a block left on a block when it's finished. It'll be completely leveled to the ground. And that prophecy was fulfilled in 70 A.D., somewhere around 37 to 40 years after Jesus left. The Roman Empire came in and ransacked it, killed over a million Jews, and, and leveled it to the ground. Just like, just like Jesus said, his word went forth from his mouth, and it accomplished the thing that he sent it forth to do. And when that temple uh, come, come down to the ground, and the city was burned. That, that is because the word of God had gone forth. And it has to, he has to accomplish whatever he says. If he says, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus had died. Lazarus has to come forth. No getting around it. 
if he looks to the storm and, and the seas are raving and everything is, and the disciples are afraid and, and they go to him and they wake him up and, and, and he talks to the storm. He says, he, he told that storm to be still. And the Bible says immediately it was still. Why? Because if it goes out of his mouth, it will accomplish the thing that it sent it forth to do. There's no getting around it. There's no guessing games. And when he said the temple would fall to the ground, there wouldn't be one stone left up on another. After the Romans got done with it, well, uh, that's the way it was. And he, this was on, they called this the Olivet Discourse because he was on the Mount of Olives. If you remember right, that's where he went back to his father. In, in front of the twelve apostles. He ascended back and he said he'd come back the same way he left. And I believe he's going to come and he's going to set, set his feet down on, on this same mount, mount that he's having this discourse with with this church. But anyways, I don't want to make this long and I always get started out, but, but uh, <clears throat> in Matthew 24 uh, verses 4 and 5, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And then verses, verses 5. Okay, that's what I read. Now, now I want you to notice something. This is this is prophetical. This whole chapter of Matthew. Now I'm let me let me let me preface this. I'm not saying that I that I believe this. I'm just saying that I find it very very interesting uh, to look at, and so I thought I'd share it. Okay. Now you heard Jesus said, "Don't be deceived. So many have come in my name, and I am Christ." Now over in Revelations, the sixth chapter verses 1 and 2, all right? Now listen. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts, saying, Come and see. And I saw, a, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him, had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went forth conquering, and conquering. Jesus said, don't be deceived. Many is going to come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and deceive many. The same thing Jesus said here happened with the, with the first seal out of the seven seals in the book of Revelation in, in the sixth chapter, by the way. And that was, the, that was verse 1, 1 and 2. Okay, so it's almost like Jesus was saying, what I'm telling you here will happen over here. And that's that's going to be the beginning of the tribulation. And Jesus said that there would be great tribulation in Matthew 24. And so now he's telling them. And so the rider on the white horse is fulfilling seemingly what Jesus said in Matthew 24 and uh, verses 4 and 5. Okay, now listen to verse 6. Matthew 24, 6, and part of 7. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, and the end is not yet, for nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Okay? Now listen to what verses 6 and uh, in Revelation 6, 3 and 4 says. You, when you when you hear this, get your Bible out. When I go to Matthew, go to Matthew. When I go back to Revelations, go back to Revelations, and you'll be blessed to follow along in your in the Bible because you'll pick so much up from it. Okay, Jesus said they would be uh, uh, rumors of wars and and. Things must come to pass before the end of the night, and na for nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. In Revelation 6, 3 and 4, see, the, the first one was the first seal. And that first one that Jesus is talking about in verses 24, 4, and 5, 
and 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 the first seal in Revelation 6, 1 and 2, that's the Antichrist. I've explained that on my last video. That's not the Christ. That is the Antichrist. Okay? Now, verses 6 and 3 and 4. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him to set thereon to take peace from the earth, and they should be, kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. Okay? He said they would be, in Matthew 24, there would be wars, rumors of wars. Nation would rise against nation, kingdom against... And Revelation 6, 3 and 4, the second seal on, on, is, 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 is the, on the red horse. Uh, he has power, was given to him to set thereon and to take peace from the earth. That's war. And and they sh that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. So Jesus said there'd be wars, rumors of wars, and you go over to Revelation uh, uh, chapter six, verses three and four, and he says that they, when this second rider on this red horse, who represents war, he's fulfilling what Jesus said in Matthew twenty-four, six and seven. I, I find this interesting. Now, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'd have to do a lot more stuff. I've done a lot of studying on it, and I've pro, I feel different ways at different times, but I just kind of find it interesting. Now, Matthew 24, 7b and 8, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. It's just like Jesus is saying. He's act, He's saying that that the, this is the great tribulation that he said would come upon the world. And if I can get down to it, I'll read it to you in Matthew 24. He said there's never such a time in the history of the world as things is going to be as bad as in the great tribulation. Okay, so Jesus is saying. That 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 when the great tribulations come, this is what you're going to look for, and then the Holy Spirit put it in Revelation six and five and six, seemingly to match what Jesus said in Matthew twenty four, because it says that when he opened the uh, when he opened the the let's see six. The third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and behold, uh, no, wait a minute, I want to go back up, because I'm not that far, I must have moved that. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see, and there went out another horse that was red, and power was given him to set thereon to take peace from the earth, and they that should be killed and they should kill one another, and and there was given unto him a great sword. Okay, now Jesus, that was the, when that horse begins to ride, the red horse, which represents war, it's going to do what Jesus said in Matthew 24, verses 7 and 8. Okay? Actually, it wasn't, it was in Matthew 24, 6 and 7 where it says there was be wars and rumors of wars, but the red horse is going to represent that. Now I can scroll up. Okay, in Matthew 24, 7 and 8, and there shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes, divers places, and all these are the beginning, all these are the beginning of sorrow. And, and in Revelation 6, 5 and 6, and when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and behold, and I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a, pair, had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and a three measures of barley for a penny. And see that thou heard not the oil or the wine. Okay, so this is what we have. You can see Jesus said there's going to be earth, there would be famines. Uh, and that's what Revelations, the, the, the third horse, uh, uh, on the black, the black horse, which would be the third seal, 
that's what he's talking about. Famine. Famine is coming. It, it matches perfectly with what Jesus said in Matthew 4, uh, 24, 7, and 8. It's really just absolutely amazing that our Lord would, would speak this, and then we will we'll begin to see it come to pass shortly. I don't believe any of the seals has been opened yet. I know there are those who does, but I don't think any of them has been opened yet. I think we're still waiting for the Lord uh, word to be would come to pass, because the same Holy Spirit that wrote in Matthew is the same Holy Spirit that wrote that that wrote in Revelations. All this is this or this is orchestrated by the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Spirit of God, and then famine and all that is, and there, you know, yeah. You know it's going to get so bad that if that if you had that much water, and in those days it quite possibly, and you had a wheelbarrow full of gold, you 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 would probably trade that wheelbarrow full of gold for this much water, because it's going to be a a, a horrible horrible situation. And these are just the six seals. You still have the seven trumpets and the, and the seven bowls. And they just proceed getting worse and worse and worse, okay? Now we scroll up and we come to Matthew 24, verses 9 through 14. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And, they, and then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the, of the, of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations. Then shall the end come. Okay, now listen to what Revelation 6, 7 and 8 says. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto him over the fourth earth to kill with the sword, and hunger, and with death, and the beast of the of the field, okay? Per, it lines up perfectly with what Matthew, you'll have to read it a few times to follow out what I'm saying. Alright? And then if you scroll down, I'm going a little fast because I, uh, then if you scroll down, you'll see Matthew 24, 15 through 28. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whosoever le readeth, let him understand. Then let him which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the house 